Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the great edition of the Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, we got a very awesome guest, someone I'm really looking forward to talking to. And her name is Melissa Ponzio. And she starred in Teen Wolf the series, and she currently stars in Teen Wolf the movie. And she is an amazing person, and I really love what 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 she does with the Teen Wolf series and the Teen Wolf film. If you haven't seen the Teen Wolf film, go out and see it. It's really, really good, especially if you're a fan of the series. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host at Guru. My interview with Teen Wolf's own Melissa Ponzio coming up very soon. This is my groom, and as always, welcome to Nightmare. Okay, um, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for coming on the show and being a guest. I really appreciate this. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Definitely, definitely. So, so like the first thing I want to start out asking you is probably, you know, a question that always gets asked is, is what drew you to want to act? Like what made you fall in love with acting? Oh, wow. Well, um, my, uh, my parents, my whole family, they're very artistic in different ways. And my mom, when she was younger, she was actually an actress and a model up in New York. And I heard stories of her performing and just just being around so many interesting, wonderful people. And when I was little, I also saw a uh, an actual film being filmed on the streets of New York, um, where, nice. where I was actually born and I grew up partly. And I remember being very influenced by that. And then I saw later in life, a Sigourney Weaver and Alien. Yes. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I have found my calling. This is the way of my world. And, um, but no, seriously, it was very influential to see her because I remember as a little girl wa wanting to be her, but also wanting mm. to be like her, like on that screen and so powerful. And I didn't, I, you know, I couldn't put that into words when I was a little girl. And, uh, you know, I was a, a bit of a class clown. I never was really good at school. And my mom always said that school was a chance just for a social interaction. <laughs> and so I had to figure out something to do. And, uh, by the time I was in high school, it was something that I knew that I wanted to try, but I was afraid to tell my mom. And so she's finally, when I got the guts to tell her, she was like, okay, well, you need a degree. Okay. Well, you need some experience. Okay. Well, you need some health insurance and money and all those good things. And then I was like, mom, is this your way of telling me that you don't want me to do this? And she's like, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just nervous. I was like, well, I'm not, I'm going to try this. And right? at the time, right. And so at the time I was working in news, I was an assignment editor for the CBS affiliate here in Atlanta and okay. got to the point where I had to pick one and I picked acting and never looked back. And so here we are. Wow. That's awesome. That's the story. That's, that. that's the two minute version. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, you of course start in the team of the series, but you also were part of another big horror show the walking dead where you played karen so ever heard of it <laughs> and i i, I might have heard of it might yes. have seen an episode or two, episode two. <laughs> <laughs> how was the experience like being on such a huge show like the walking dead it was huge I it was know. exactly it was exactly how and you know i think anybody walking into an arena like the certified arena, because that by the time I got on the show on, on third season, fourth season, I mean, it was, it was a juggernaut. It was the biggest show in the world. I know. So just first off, just to audition for a show like that is an honor to get a call of interest and then to possibly even be offered something on um, anybody that got to uh, do that in any type of fashion while that show was on it. That that's the gift is just being able to yeah. be close enough to to be part, possibly be part of it and to be part of it. That's, it was, it was a definitely um, a highlight. And what was really amazing is that it shoots here. It shot here um, in Sonoy, Georgia, oh, okay. close to Atlanta. And so uh, my first day on set, there were a lot of familiar friends and faces and yo nice. Ponzio and what up and how are you? And remember when we <laughs> did that commercial 17,000 years ago. So it was almost like coming home, right? Because you, you kind of already know a good amount of oh, people yeah. that are on that set. And so then the higher ups are like, who is this girl? <laughs> How does she already, what's happening? 
So that was fun to, you know, to kind of walk in and already have a warm reception. Yeah, and then I, I got to say, you know, I've been, I've been very lucky because my three larger um, projects being Teen Wolf and Chicago Fire mm-hmm. and The Walking Dead, amazing cast, inclusive cast, welcoming yeah. cast. And so that, that makes your job as an actor, I think that much easier because then you don't have those you know, you have those first day at school jitters, but then you find your table at lunch and then it's yeah, a- yeah. that's, that's a really good way of putting that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, I think everybody, I don't care who they are that first day, you always have the first day jitters, even George Clooney, I think still has the first day jitters, but he finds his table at lunch and that's fine. All right. Okay. Okay. And, and like, I, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm not like the big act. Like I, I've been on set for like, like I was, I did like the back, the background for like Creed. And when you say like sitting at a table for lunch, oh my God, the catering that they did for Creed was amazing. Amazing. The, the layout. Totally. That's, I, I mean, I joke, I say, you know, the reason why I act is for craft service, you know, the snack <laughs> table and then for lunch. Who, who wouldn't? I mean, yeah, we, we, you know, we get very well taken care of, but, you know, also they're taking care of the, the crew that's there for much longer and much harder hours. So that I think always like the fuel for the crew is what really gets us there. No, yeah, definitely. And, and like the, the, the great part with the walking dead, like, like a lot of people just go on the show one, one, one episode, a cameo and they're in and out and they're done. But, you were actually you had like a really like good role in the series thank you and i don't i don't believe my character was going to stay there for for very long but you know i think that um you know the writers are constantly looking at things the writers are constantly um seeing chemistry and um you know i was very lucky to to continue and i and this is a true absolute true story that at the, the finale episode of season three, there were several combinations of several of the governor's people either living or dying and who was gonna come back and why. And, you know, and, and there were several rewrites and I was just, you know, quite honestly, just very lucky that I made it through to the fourth season. Yeah. It, at, at one point it was, you know, everybody was dead. Um, <laughs> and so uh, it's just, um, it was just su- super lucky for me. And then to, um, to know that, you know, uh, spoiler alert, that my death was gonna actually propel Chad Coleman's character of Tyrese yeah. into the season, you know, they, you know, Scott Gimple, the the showrunner at the time, he was very kind in saying, you know, we're not just killing you off to kill you off. We're killing you off because it's very important to the story and it's very much needed for this character. And it's going to bring the show to a different level and, you know, different experience. And so I could accept that. Of course, you're bummed because well, now yeah, you don't have a lunch course. table. <laughs> you just got to go home and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich alone. But um, it was fun while it lasted. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw you also do some like a podcast show, Bridge Bridgewater. Like, how does what is like a pod podcast show? So, what was really interesting was that during COVID, through a series of events, I was um, able to uh, be a part of the Bridgewater Bridgewater podcast, and it's in it's um, a st- a story about kind of like a. Um, Bermuda Triangle in a particular part of the of the world and there's okay. very specific characters that happen in this world and um and so it's kind of like a, a narrative podcast it's a story that we tell over several episodes and um it's been very well received and I'm very happy to be a part of it we're in our second season and it and it was interesting because again we had to shoot it during covid so we couldn't go into studios and we had to do it over zoom so here we are doing it over Zoom, just like a four square or a six square. And, you know, I'm in my guest room and Misha is in like somebody's closet and then somebody else has a studio in their house and then somebody else is in their basement. And so we're just <laughs> trying to make the best of it, um, recording ourselves. It, so it was a it was a very interesting time. And then the second season, I think we were all in proper areas. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wow. OK, nice. And when you first joined the cast of of Teen Wolf the series did you ever think like 
like say like filming the first the first 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 season of Teen Wolf, did you ever think that it would go as big as it did and grow to the fan base that it that it grew? I think that we were all and we still are um, so humbled with our fan base, and you know, talk about like worldwide fandom. We are very lucky. Um, to have everyone from all corners of the of the globe to be um, so supportive while we were in production for the television series, while yeah. we were on hiatus and now with the with the with the movie. And I always have that uh, take the chance to say thank you to to our fandom because we wouldn't be doing this without their support. We just wouldn't be here. But to answer your question, I think that everyone knew that in the first season it was something really special um, because of the chemistry of our cast. Mm -hmm. because of uh you know mtv and and it had you know i, I you know back then it was kind of like what's going to be our twilight what's going to be our <laughs> yeah. you know kind of uh you know brooding and moody uh next thing and i think that they did a really great job of it's it's really romeo and juliet with a little bit of werewolf basically yeah it's, it's basically. not it's not werewolves with a little bit of romeo and juliet and so i think that you know, Jeff coming from Criminal Minds and his writing background knew that, you know, the backbone had to um, be uh, characters yeah. in relationships and mythology, maybe, maybe in that order, you know, and so, and I think they were very smart with all of their casting. And then of course, the parents, you know, the writers and Jeff bringing the parents in in the second season, I think that that just kind of, you know, elevated it to for more people to be on the inside and more adventure and more action. And so I, I always thought, not just because I was one of the parents, but I always thought that that was a smart move compared to other young adult, um, you know, programming that was out there. Uh oh, you're uh, frozen. Oh, no, really? Yeah, you there? Uh, okay. Yeah. Did you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know what just happened. I, it probably <laughs> is my my connection. It happens every once in a while. <laughs> well, um, like it's funny how you said like it. It's it's a love story too. Besides like like the horror elements and the action, because I mean, when you first watch the series with Scott and Allison, and and oh my god, with the movie, the whole twist with Scott and Allison was crazy. Crazy. You know? <laughs> Um, how how did it feel for 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 you? You, you know, Team Wolf the series is is done. It's over, and all these years later, you're coming back and you're playing Mal Melissa Scott's mother again. It was a really wonderful um, gift. I keep using that word. It's such a small word, but it means so much. We always felt that there was more story to tell. I think that everyone was kind of uh, hoping for a, a season seven, even before we got the news. You know, I mean, we we were thinking that we were going to have uh, more time, more time to tell more yeah. story. And uh, and I think that there was so so much richness within our characters and again our mythology that it, it could have gone on for a long time. And so I don't want to say. Of course, we were disappointed when we got the news that you know we were going to okay. cap it at a hundred episodes. Um, but we were disappointed for for the the right reasons because we're fans of our show as well, and we're fans of the stories that we tell and the, and the characters that we play, and of course, being able to work together. And so, there was a reunion on our ten year anniversary that we did during COVID that they had on MTV, and Jeff made a little comment about how people were looking at the property again, it being Team Wolf, oh. and I was like, wait a minute, is. <laughs> Am I listening to this? Is anybody else hearing this? And so he was a little cagey about it, uh, as he as he should have been. And so when I think we were all really just tremendously uh, thrilled when we each got the call, you know. And then it was, let's wait and see because we don't yeah. know everybody who's coming back. Like even though we're coming back and we would like to have you, that doesn't mean that everyone was able to to come back in the way that they wanted to. So then for that part of it to fall into place was really wonderful too. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's real. That's that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and and like Melissa, Mal, like her from from the time she started on Team Wolf the series up until the film now, like what did what do you like most about playing her and 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 how 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 she was from from early on until now? 
you know, people often ask if I would like to be a creature or you know, some type <laughs> nice. of, uh, you know, mythological uh, existence, um, <laughs> energy. And I always say, no, <laughs> I like being human. I like being human <laughs> on a show that is filled with other, you know, otherworldly um, souls, because mm -hmm. I think it allows you to play um, a much more grounded character in my, my opinion for me, you know, there's okay. always something to hold on to, even though, you know, there's a whole discord, there's a whole discussion about the humanity of all of our, of all of our, um, you know, characters on the show, because even yeah. monsters, there's, 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 you know, uh, humane um, existences within inhumane people or things. That's a whole thing. But, um, <laughs> and I, and so what it allowed her to do was to do, uh, you know, dramatic, wonderful, life-saving things as a mom. And as somebody that's a steadfast character too, you know, she did, you know, she was very steadfast. She didn't change much within the television series. She was always yes, loving yes. and supportive and there and um, contemplative and uh, just trying her best at, at whatever whatever was asked of her, she stepped up. And I think that, that showed in the movie as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Def definitely did. Like, like I I I always loved the scenes with you, you and Scott. Like you, yeah. you, you could definitely feel like the, the like love there between between mother mother and son yeah we tried really hard um you know to portray like the the small parts and also the large parts of a relationship and that was very easy for us to do i mean again we're all friends we're all friends yeah. on the show um we're family yeah, yeah every, you know no matter how much time passes we're all able to get together very cordial very respectful of our cast and our crew so it didn't feel like any time had passed um, it just felt like we were coming together after five years with a lot more experience to bring to these characters, specifically our two characters. And I hope that it shows in the performance that we gave together. Oh, definitely. Yes, definitely. And from Teen Wolf, the series, like what, what do you think, which, which scene did you like doing best from the series? I, I know my personal favorite was when Tyler Posey, when Scott actually reveals himself as a werewolf to you and the facial expression you have, like you didn't know whether to be scared or to be sad or to accept him. And it took your character a while to come around then. Yes, thank you. Um, I thank you for saying that. It was, it, that was a, obviously a very pivotal point in our relationship on the show. Also pivotal point in story and, um, yeah, I remember that. I remember the the also it was it was a long day. We were in that jail for so long and they were shooting guns and the gunpowder was getting in our eyes. It was in pretty oh intense. God. The Canamo, the stunt guy had he was sweating. It was so hard. It was a whole, you know, so we have a different memory. When you see something, <laughs> we have a different memory of what it was like. But I also like um to piggyback off of what you mentioned. Yeah. That scene where we're between the door. Yes. And like, yes. he's trying to talk to me and I'm a little afraid of him. Um, you know, that was the only, and I think it was more timidness than not accepting because I feel like Jeff wrote um, Melissa McCall and I, and I hope that I portrayed her as someone that has unconditional love for her son. Definitely. You know? um, no matter what really happened, she stepped up in love first. And, uh, and I think that, that, you know, my parents did that for me. Hopefully I do that for, for my daughter and anybody else that, you know, you step up with love first, figure out what's going on. And then maybe we get into a bigger discussion of like really what's going on here. But if you step up with it, with love and kindness first, then, then it's a much more um, easy situation in an uneasy time. Oh, that makes definitely. Sense. Yeah, definitely. You, you know, I mean, Mom telling 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 her son, I I love you, but when you howl at the moon and change, don't come near me and try to kill me or anything, right? <laughs> right. Right. Let's slow the roll. Let's let's lock the deadbolt on that one, son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Teen Wolf the movie, the one, you know, it's currently out now. Like I saw it was amazing. Is there scene from the film now that you had the most fun fun filming 
I have to say, yeah, I'm, we're so excited that it's out on Paramount Plus and we're very excited about how well it was received and people watched it and, you know, on all the different platforms reaching out to say how much they enjoyed it or, you know, their their opinions otherwise. We, we you know, we're, we're happy. We're just happy that uh, people are talking about us again and, 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 and still engaged within the fandom. It was really fun to shoot that first scene at Beacon Hills Memorial Hospital where, you know, um, they're bringing in Allison for the first time because uh, that actually was shot out in Los Angeles on the original Beacon Hills Hospital set. It's still out there. Oh, um, wow. we were, yeah, we were scheduled to shoot here in Atlanta and then through a series of events, they took it back out to Los Angeles. And so it was literally all of us walking back onto the set with some of the same crew. So I, I say this as a, as a joke, but it was almost like we were in a fever dream. It's like, what it, didn't we, I, I was just here five years ago and nothing had changed. When I say nothing had changed, even the trash cans were in the same place because it's still a working set out there. So yeah. people can go, other productions can go and use these different sets and maybe change up something, put it back. So, um, for me, it was an amazing touchstone to be able to shoot at Beacon Hills Memorial Hospital mm -hmm. and then turn around and come back to Atlanta and then shoot this whole, you know, this whole new progression of our characters and our world here in Atlanta. And I live here in Atlanta. And so it was yeah. really fun to come back. And we shot the first two seasons here, season one and season two in Atlanta. So it was like Atlanta out to Los Angeles, Los Angeles back to Atlanta for the movie. So it was this full circle moment as well. <laughs> oh, wow. That's that's really cool that's crazy <laughs> yeah it was crazy it was it was absolutely crazy <laughs> and, and like what i was talking about earlier like the how how much like i love the, the on the on screen mother and son between melissa and scott like mm -hmm. did that for you and tyler posey did that carry off screen too did you have like a sort of mother son bond like off off camera so i wouldn't say that i think that the uh, the wonderful thing that we have on set too is that we're all peers yeah all friends so you know i can't say that i have a mother relationship with him i i would say that we all have a peer relationship with each other it's an even playing field and i think um not only in in respect in, in ego and in love, you know, and in, in support and all those things. And so I thought, I think that that's what made it also easy for all of us to come back and, and reconnect and be able to work together because a lot of us were seeing each other for the first time in, in five years. You know, we have conventions where we run into each other well, and yeah. maybe, you know, on other projects, we, you know, cross paths. Of course, there's friendships outside of work, but this was the first, like, this was the first time that I had seen Crystal in a really long time. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and we had some, you know, spoiler alert, we had some old faces come back that maybe yes. people hadn't seen for a while. And yes. so, um, and so that was really fun for both cast and crew to be able to experience that. So, I would just say that everyone on set, and to your point, um, Tyler and I, we all have a very genuine um, level of friendship and respect and connection that stayed from when we, you know, when we wrapped the series up until beginning shooting through shooting the movie. Oh, wow. Yeah, because like every time I look, at, like I, I always watch behind the scenes, like with 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 team wolfman they would have the series and they would show like the behind the scenes and i saw a couple things from the film the 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 thing i love most of, about the show and about the film is how close the cast is like this isn't just something that the cast comes on and says oh we're 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 family we're close and they really aren't but you but you are actually really close and what do you think like made made that bond so strong with everyone from the cast you know i i say this and i really mean it uh, i think it comes from the top down and it comes from tyler tyler oh. has always been kind of our our captain and oh, okay. he's always set the tone uh for emotionally and also for work ethic I yeah. mean, when we started the show, he was 18 a lot of the kids were really young and yeah. we were pulling 20 hour days and he was the most on set. I don't think that he had a day off, you know, that first season, you know, he was almost in every single, if you really look, he's almost in every single scene. That's, 
So that means that he's working almost every single day. Not a complaint, not a sick day, always joyous. And so I think that that and 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 we all love and respect him and you know and and he it's his show you know and 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 oh yeah and he doesn't but that's not to say that he uh you know on some shows people might throw their weight around he is inclusive and warm and happy um happy to be with all of us happy for new people to come and so that's an infectious thing you want to come to work when your boss is happy you want to yes. come to work when you know that you're going to have a, a good day because even when you have a bad day it's a good day on set True. right it's going to yeah, be a good yes, lunch definitely. table yeah <laughs> going to be a good lunch table yes <laughs> and tyler posey even does some really good songs like I, I think he made a song for the movie right yeah lemon it's the last song lemon. over yeah. the credits i believe yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah no he's a badass musician man he's been on tour um his girlfriend also is um you know a singer songwriter and yeah. they tour together and it's it's a really wonderful thing yeah yeah his his music's really good uh, mm-hmm. when i was when i was listening when i was watching a movie and i i heard the song come on, i said that sounds so much like tyler posey and then i was like looking at i saw that is him yeah, <laughs> yeah we're really proud yeah definitely and and someone someone i interviewed from the case i i actually became really really a uh, cool with him now because he i live in philly he lives in new 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 york so we aren't far from each other is actually vince Eric oh yeah yeah he, he told me to tell you he he said hi he said he's oh he said you're interviewing listen and like tell her tell her i said hi oh <laughs> yeah he's so cool i mean talk about talk about the baton being you know mm-hmm. you know handed over um we had a couple of scenes that were in conjunction with one another. And I have to say, when I talked with Jeff after watching the movie, I was like, you know who is really funny? Vince. He <laughs> has really great timing. He he delivers really well. He's 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 young, but he also like he gets it. He's in on it um, with his youthfulness. And I think I think that's gonna serve him really well, not only in this franchise, but others. He's a he was a, again another guy that was up for it. Every time I saw him, he's like, dude, what are we doing today? And yeah, let's get out there on the field. And, you know, when 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 you have that much responsibility on set, um, people are looking at you. And I think that he ha- he handled it really, really well. And I look forward to seeing him soar as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he's he's a really nice person. He is. Yeah, he's really nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And was there, when you were doing the film, I, I always like asking guests this, was there any like funny or cool behind the scenes stories that happened while you were filming? Yeah, I haven't posted it yet. And so I'm just going to be a little cryptic until I did do, but there was um, this prop in this one particular scene. Mm-hmm. Actually, it was part of the set dressing that kept getting in the way of me and Tyler doing this particular scene. and it. Um, Every time we would turn turn this corner and we would absolutely have to laugh because literally it was like something dangerous. And every time it would almost happen, we would be like, can, can somebody, like, it's not a sharp knife, but can somebody take this knife out of my eye? Like, it was just like this very, I have to, I have to post about it now that you've reminded me. <laughs> so that's just like an inside thing. Like, you know, and a lot of that stuff kind of happens, you know, we trip or, or well, something yeah. falls on us and, you know, and it becomes a funny thing, but yeah, we, we had to kind of like really pay attention because otherwise someone was going to get like an eye taken out. Oh my god. It happens. It happens. You gotta you gotta be aware. <laughs> what do you like doing during your free free time when you're not acting or auditioning? Thank you. Um, well, I swim in the summer. That's what I do for 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 fun and for exercise. I make I make a summer body in the summer by swimming. I used to swim when I was uh really young. I was I was a pretty good swimmer. I, I still I'm still not bad. Um, so I like to do that. Um, I go to estate sales and, uh, I'm a collector of vintage, uh, purses, jewelry, and clothing. And so I go to a lot of estate sales, a lot of garage sales. Um, and I like to find things for like less than $10 that look like a million bucks. That's what I'm always yeah, definitely. I have a lot of friends and family and that I, I spend time with. Um, my partner is an actor here in Atlanta as well. And so we're constantly auditioning and, um, 
my um on a personal note my stepfather recently passed away actually when we were oh, shooting no, I'm the movie. sorry i'm sorry too it was it was a it was actually a really um challenging time to shoot the movie while that was happening but um i inherited the family dog her name is sophie and she's oh, a 110 okay. pound cupcake and so i spend a lot of time with her now too so i'm a, i'm a, i'm a instant dog mom <laughs> okay there you go nice <laughs> And of course, you can tell how my setup is that I'm a big horror fan. And I always like to ask us this is, are there any horror movies that you like to watch? Ooh. I like suspense thriller horror. I can't okay. even remember the last one. You know, I'm I'm just, I'm one of those people that I continuously go back to the classics. Oh, so yeah, it's going to be the entire Alien franchise. It's nice. going to be Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's going to be, it's going to be the original Jaws. It's going to be <sighs> practical, um, you know, when you knew that they really had to, to work to get something done. It wasn't just a, well, we'll fix it in post, you know. Like when you're really seeing it, that those are the old movies that I really, really love. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I love them. Like, especially Jaws and the Alien films. I'm like, ah, classic, classic. Classic. Films. Definitely, yes. Now, did you know that when they were casting for Alien, that the script was written you, but unisex? You couldn't tell by the characters who was a man. And who, oh, who they out, really? and so when they were when they were reading and when they were casting it, they actually came they actually had them do several different of the roles, and then that's how it it actually um was cast. I, I read that somewhere. I don't know I if it's hundred percent sure, but isn't that amazing? Yeah, definitely. Oh wow, yeah, because that something similar. Did, did you ever see pin 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 pinhead? L, yeah. L razor well uh, originally like Clive Barker wrote pinhead as you don't know what he he is he's he's just there an amalgam like you couldn't yeah, tell like, like, you, you you don't uh, he they did he didn't make it make pinhead a man or a woman it was it was just there but then you know when they made the film they they kind of told Clive Barker they wanted it to be a man and Doug Doug Bradley playing, but then the new version of Pinhead is actually a woman now. Really? Yeah. I have to look for that. I did not know that. Yeah, I, you know, I think that back then, you know, I guess what were the terms that we were using back then? Um, unisex, androgynous, yes. maybe more along yes. the lines. You know, um, uh, they didn't really have a, a clear understanding. But uh, you know, there are people that are ahead of the curve, and I'm very thankful for those people because we wouldn't be here today with all this creativity and and new levels of understanding, like um, you know, uh, gender and representation and exactly. what you want the world to see. It's a it's a beautiful thing, and it shows. And listen, if it can be done in Pinhead, it can be done <laughs> anywhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that story. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of, of, of songs do you like? What's on your playlist? Oh, recently I've been listening to um, a lot of U2. Um, I listened to some Lenny Kravitz recently. Oh, yeah. Lenny Lenny Kravitz is great. I love him. Yeah, Lenny, Lenny's really, really good. Um, yeah. You know, I, I watched a little bit of the Grammys. Uh, Stevie Wonder is also on rotation these days. I, I got him back in, in into the rotation. So, yeah, those are probably the most. Oh, and also uh, Hole. Do you know the band? Oh, Hole? yeah. Court, Courtney, Courtney Love. Love. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Live Through This is one of my favorite albums. That's That's oh, been on rotation that. as well. Yes, yes. I love that doll, 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 yes. doll parts. Oh man, yes, like, I, all parts, I love yeah. listening to that song. Yes, definitely. <laughs> if you had to choose a karaoke song, if you were out with people, what would be the song? Oh, um, "Remedy" by the Black Crows. Oh yeah, I've never done I've never done karaoke, but that okay. would be my song. Oh okay, all right. And what junk food do you like the most like is there like a certain junk food that you're like oh my god yes i want that one <laughs> kit kats i love the kit kat um ritz crackers yeah yeah i just ate half a sleeve of ritz crackers before we started this interview i don't know why they're buttery and delicious 
Um, I don't know. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not like a huge snacker. Yeah. I, I know it sounds boring, but I'll make popcorn, but I'll make it on the stove top. So it's like okay. real kernel kernels, real butter. So popcorn is a little snack. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're watching a film, like you, you know, back those great with watching a movie and you turn out the lights and eat the popcorn. Uh, yeah. That's perfect. Totally. When I was a little girl, my mom, um, we, we would either make it in the stove pot. That's the yeah. way that I still do it now. Yeah. Or if I was really good, I had to be really good. So it didn't happen often. She would get a Jiffy pop that had a little handle on it. And it looked like a pie tin that had aluminum foil over the top. You're probably too young for this. And you would put it on the stove top. I do remember that. And you would heat it up and it would start to like make this big brain of popcorn. And then sometimes it was a little off. Yes, definitely. And the steam would come out. And so then you would open it up and you would have like, you know, Jiffy Pop burnt popcorn. And that was a treat. But yeah, popcorn for all movies, for sure. Oh, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) Are you more of a coffee or tea person? Tea, but I put cream and sugar in it. There you go. Okay. (laughs) And which app do you like the most? Like, are are you Instagram, TikTok, uh, like a YouTube? So I have to say, um, well, every morning it's check the email. Not that that's an app, (laughs) but it's check the email. Um, check news, Instagram. Those are my three things that I go to. So email first, just in case there's an emergency or something needs to okay. happen. Um, news, just to get the headlines to make sure that I know what's going on in the world. And then Instagram to see everybody's business. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, with um, I'm uh, uh, Italian and with your last name, I was going to ask if you are too. I'm half Sicilian. Yeah. So on my pop oh, side, that, I'm half Sicilian. That, and then my mom, name. yeah. And my mom, she's Native American and French. So those oh, are the wow. kind of the amalgam. Okay. Okay. So I have to ask the uh, Italian question. Do you call it gravy or sauce with the pasta? So I call it gravy. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Gravy. <laughs> Sunday gravy. Yeah. Gravy on the stove. Yes, definitely. And people don't yeah. understand it. And then I know that you're just not understanding my culture and that's fine you can stand over there yeah <laughs> great all for right sure. all right i yes but another person that thank you it. yes <laughs> awesome and um is there anything coming up next for you that you want to like talk about or plug or Ah, oh, thanks for asking. Um, well, you know, Bridgewater's out. We're really excited about the second season. Um, obviously, if you haven't watched Teen Wolf on Paramount Plus, please do so. I have a um, uh, <laughs> I have a very nice, fun role with this this new comedic actor. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Kevin Hart. Kevin oh, Hart, yeah, I think is his name. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, don't know. I think I think he's going to be a big thing. Let me tell yeah, you something. He's not big yet, but I think he's, he's getting there. <laughs> so I booked it. It's called, um, and we shot it in the late fall. And it's and it's and it's a play on words. It's called Die Harder, Die Harder, right? And so oh. he plays himself as kind of like a wannabe action star, and I play his um, agent manager. And uh, hilarity ensues when he's trying to get this script done. Oh, I'm um, sure. <laughs> but I mean, you know, so you audition and you don't know if you're going to get it. And then they call and they're like, you booked it. And I'm like, oh, uh-huh. great. And of course, Kevin Hart. Of course, everyone knows Kevin Hart. Of um, course. And so after we um, after we work together, one of the things that I like to do is kind of go back and again, Instagram, check out people's Instagram, maybe follow them so that then, you know, you do the business of like promoting when it comes out. He has 163 million followers. <laughs> he is one of the most followed people yeah. on that platform. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely. so glad I knew that after working with him. 163 million. 163 million. Wow. wow. That, the reach. That, that is a lot. The reach. I don't even, I don't even think Justin Bieber has that many. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I think it's 160 because I don't think it's 16, 16.3 million. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it was just, it was just amazing. Um, you know, and somebody, you know, talk about somebody that has a work ethic. He was, he was on working from action to cut. And then he was off working and coming back 
he was just like this all day long, all day long, all day long, all day long. It was, it was really phenomenal. Yeah. He's, oh, he's a legitimate, God. legitimate hustler. Okay. Okay. That, that, that's amazing how people get like those huge followings. Cause um, Noah Schnatt from Strange, Stranger Things, like he has a really huge following too. It's amazing. It's amazing <laughs> when people find you. And also that's a, that I think that's a, um, a compliment to wh whatever you are putting out there. You know, people want to watch your content or know more about you. Um, you know, that's part of it too. You know, you have to, and then I think that everyone has to be very grateful because especially with television, you know, when people are uh, asking you to come into your living mm -hmm. room, be grateful, mm -hmm. you know, be grateful that they want you to be a part of their Thursday night or whatever it may be. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> nice. And lastly, like where can fans follow you at? Oh, yay. Um, <laughs> well, I'm both on Instagram and on um, Twitter. My full name, Melissa Ponzio with the number one behind it. That's where you can find me. Sweet, sweet. I love it. It was so much fun talking to you. Thank, thank, thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. It was a joy to talk with you too. I love, I love making you laugh. I love making people laugh. So thank you for laughing at my stupidity and funniness. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And most of all, thank you for watching and supporting this show. We are, we are oh, so thrilled yeah. to be back together and, you know, and fingers crossed that there might be something else down the pike. So we I'm wouldn't really be here. Hoping. Yeah, uh, me too. I'm we wouldn't be here without you and with everyone that watched. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Looking forward to more crossing my fingers, to more stuff coming down the line. <laughs> Thank you. And best of luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, we'll see you later. Definitely. Have, have, have a great rest of 2023, too. <laughs> Thanks. You, too. You, too. Hey, you know what? If I would love to come back if we do another movie, and I'll give you all Oh, my insights. God. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, it's a definitely. Okay. All Thank right. You. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.